In this lesson, I'm going to be explaining what Ethereum is and why it is so important for the crypto economy. Bitcoin started the blockchain movement, but it is not the only blockchain and many other major blockchains have arisen since 2009 when the first Bitcoin block was mined. Ethereum may just be the most important one of these, and I'm going to tell you why. Ethereum is its own blockchain. It's not related to Bitcoin. Ethereum has a thriving ecosystem of applications built on its chain. So Bitcoin is one blockchain and Ethereum is a completely separate and different blockchain. Now, whereas Bitcoin is concerned with money and the transfer of funds from one person to another person, the technology itself underlying Bitcoin is capable of so much more than that. Use cases such as data management, land registry, file storage, Internet of Things, governance, the sharing economy, gaming, and the tokenization of property, to name but just a few possibilities. These are all possible with blockchain technology, but require additional functionality that is not offered on Bitcoin. This is what led to the birth of Ethereum. Ethereum was founded by the prodigy Vitalik Buterin and is an open source, public blockchain based distributed computing platform and operating system featuring smart contract functionality, all made possible by the Ethereum virtual machine, which can execute scripts using an international network of distributed public nodes. Basically what that means is a blockchain with a lot more functionality than Bitcoin. Now, while most crypto coins generally focus on trying to be a means of payment, much like Bitcoin, others like Ethereum perform multiple roles. So yes, Ethereum's native asset Ether, it can be used like money, but the Ethereum blockchain can also be used to issue assets in the form of tokens. This is done to expand the functions of the network beyond simple payments. So let's imagine here that Ethereum is a road and that all of the tokens and other applications are like different kinds of cars on that road. Just like cars need the road to get from point A to point B, Tokens need Ethereum. Now, there are many tokens which live on the Ethereum blockchain. Tokens are cryptocurrencies which run on top of another blockchain at their simplest definition. So, for example, let's look at Chainlink. Chainlink is a token built on Ethereum. Chainlink is a token that connects trusted data sources together and allows for the settlement of contracts based off the information provided with that data. And it needs something like the infrastructure of Ethereum to be able to function. And it also benefits from the security of Ethereum and also of the innovation happening on Ethereum while only needing to focus on its own business of setting up those trusted data feeds. Now, a big part of Ethereum's innovation was the implementation of smart contracts. A smart contract is simply a computer protocol intended to digitally facilitate, verify, or enforce the negotiation or performance of a contract. Essentially, automated contracts. Smart contracts not only define the rules and penalties around an agreement in the same way that a traditional contract might, but 
also then automatically enforces those obligations of the contract. So smart contracts are programs that execute exactly as they are set up to do by their creators. And Ethereum allows anyone to easily make their own smart contract and then run it on top of Ethereum. Might sound simple, but this is actually revolutionary in the scale of the use case potential to make the internet a trustless and decentralized environment. And that brings us to dApps. Ethereum blockchain applications are often referred to as dApps or decentralized applications. Now they are called this because they are based on Ethereum's smart contracts. And there is a wide range of applications running on Ethereum from projects like Genosis, which deals with prediction markets. We have Digix, which deals with gold pegged tokens. We have Power Ledger, which is an energy trading platform. And then there's even something like Crypto Kitties. Yes, indeed. Digital collectible kitties on the blockchain. And much, much more besides that. Those are only a taste of the potential examples. These distributed, resilient, transparent, and incentivized applications are remapping the technological landscape and defining new use cases for blockchain technology way beyond payments. Ethereum is also the home for the decentralized finance movement, which is bringing innovations into the crypto economy. Things like permissionless loans and microinsurance are now becoming a reality. Now, this is a very, very basic overview of Ethereum and of what Ethereum does. And in this video, I only discussed Ethereum, but I want you to know there are many, many more blockchains out there, such as Stellar Lumens, Tron, NEM, EOS, NEO, and on and on and on and on. There's probably a couple hundred at this point. Many of them have similar functionality to Ethereum or have built on additional functionalities. And then, of course, there are many like Litecoin and XRP and Monero and Dash and even Dogecoin. Yes, a cryptocurrency named after a dog meme. All of those, though, most um, primarily focus on payments, just like Bitcoin does. And while many of the projects that you'll see listed on the different data sites provide amazing value to the crypto economy, I will not be covering any of those in this course specifically. The rabbit hole of crypto goes incredibly deep and will require extensive research on your part to become familiar with some of these other coins and tokens which are on offer out there. Now that's all for this video. And again, I know it's a lot of information to take in, but remember, you can always rewatch this video, take some notes, let the information sink in a little bit. You can do that anytime you need to. Again, I have provided some questions for you to help kind of refresh the main points of this video. So you can check that out in the description as well.